cyber teachers. Today we're looking at cash flow forecasts. Yes, and inflows and outflows. So my question to you is, is that water flowing in or flowing out? Is it high tide or low tide? Let's have a look. Roll that jingle, Mr. T. I used the example of the tides and the waves coming in and going out every day during the tides. So let's have a look how that translates to business management cash flow forecasting. At the beach, you normally have um, waves coming in. And that's called your inflow. So if you're a surfer, you're going to wait for the right wave to come in to catch to have a nice day of surfing, getting out as far as you can. And then also the sea normally pulls back, the outflows and the waves or the water pulls back. So you might ask, what has this got to do with business? But before we do that, we also have tides. Um, there's tides where I live. And the tides come in twice a day. As you can see on this little example, we have low tide 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, most people are still in bed. They're not very big waves, 1.8. And then there's um, time 3, you'll see there's low tide again, half past 4 in the afternoon. And then we have high tide with 8 uh, meter waves in height, 10 o'clock in the morning and then 10 o'clock at night. So this is very important if you're a surfer or if you um, work on a boat or a yacht. But let's have a look at business and how we can use this example throughout this presentation. Yes, the answer was twice a day. Twice a day we see low tide, twice a day we see high tide. So let's link this to business. In business, every day hopefully you get cash inflows. Some business might not have sales every day, but they look at uh, sales over a monthly period and they make up for that. Then there's also cash outflows. This is a uh, painful part of business. What comes in doesn't always stay in your bank account or your cash register. It goes out as an outflow. So let's move on. Off it goes. So coming back to the inflows, they're also referred to as receivables. And the outflows are also referred to as payables. You need to pay people. And there's a long list of them. Off they go. So where does this cash come from and where did it go? That's normally a question entrepreneurs might ask themselves at the end of the month or the end of the year. Where did all the money go? So let's look at this example. So the top we've got receivables or inflows. Now I've got a list there. Convenience store, income, petrol sales. Um, you might sell diesel. You might have a restaurant or a takeaway restaurant. You might have a car wash. You might have a trailer hire. This a little side note, these receivables are also referred to as income streams. So basically the more income streams you can generate for your business, the better. At, a, at the bottom, can you think of any other inflows or receivables? Think about that for a second or two. Now, if you look at the picture on the left, there's a big truck standing behind uh, the gas station. What some of these gas stations actually do have, they have overnight facilities or accommodation for truckers or truck drivers. They spend days and long hours, a lot of miles on the road, so sometimes they need, just need to sleep over. Not all of them sleep over in their trucks or their cabs as they can do, so you, that could be another income stream, overnight facilities for drivers of big trucks. Then at the bottom we've got payables and outflows, um, there's a long list of them, VAT, value added tax, food suppliers, fuel suppliers, salaries and wages. And this list is normally longer, and again, if you can think of another example or two, one thing I did leave off my list was insurance. You definitely need insurance. And because it's um, quite a dangerous place if with diesel and fuel, um, I would imagine that the insurance is quite high on a monthly basis. Okay, let's move on. So I've got two lists here on the left. We've got our inflows coming in. These are all estimates or made-up numbers, or sometimes we refer to them as guesstimates. And they are called receivables inflows. And on the right, you have your outflows sitting there. Let's Let's look at this gas, this gas station. Are they doing well? Are they in trouble? Let's have a look. Now, just before we carry on, the VAT on sales here on the payable side, I worked it out in the UK. VAT is normally 18% and 20% VAT on fuel that the government charges. And I've just put in there under salaries and wages. We've got three staff working for us. Okay, let's move on. So, total receivables, £186,000. Total payables is 242,700. So, a few things. Just looking at these numbers, 
if you are the manager of this gas station or the owner, would you be happy? Maybe, maybe not. So you need to work out the net cash flow. So how do we do that? There's your inflows coming out, in, outflows going out. I hope you spotted it. The outflows are, the number is bigger than the inflows. So let's move on to the next example. There's a calculation. We have total inflows minus total outflows, and that gives us an answer or a net cash flow answer of minus 56,700 pounds. So the question is, is this a positive cash flow or is it a negative cash flow? There's a negative or it's in red. Sometimes we put it in red in accounting or sometimes you'll see it as a negative. And the answer is it's definitely negative cash flow. So the next question is, now what? What can we do? We can't carry on like this year in, year out. You will either lose your job as a manager of this um, petrol filling station or you might have to find ways. Okay, so let's have a look at the next question. What are your options to recover the shortfall? Okay, bank overdraft. We could go to the bank and ask them for an overdraft. It's normally in the UK up to 40% interest charge which is it's quite significant and it's not healthy for your cash flow and it's normally short term. You can't go on year in, year out over a longer period of time on a bank overdraft. Or there's also something called debt factoring. That's normally a part payment collection. There's normally external companies that help you. They either buy the debt off you for an amount. It's normally less than what you actually have at the moment on your books, but sometimes they can also try and collect the debt on your behalf for you, but then they can charge 0.5 to 5% commission. Both of them are an option to survive, but you need to be more creative. Either cut your outflows or um, increase your inflows with your revenue streams, as I said earlier. Okay, the last thing, normally in accounting or financial management, you won't see the inflows and outflows like I did it with the waves coming in and out on the left and the right. It's normally displayed in this format. You have all your inflows at the top, all listed down to the total cash inflows and then you have your outflows and then at the bottom you have your net cash flows where you you subtract your outflows from your inflows and this is still the same example just another uh, last two points normally the cash flow forecast will be done from month to month not and this what you see here is a total this will be your last column on the far right of a spreadsheet on excel or on um, google sheets and then secondly investors and banks might ask you to do this for three years so three years 12 months a year so 36 month cash flow forecast that's normally what they want from you just to see what could come in over three years 36 months so that is the cash flow forecast thank you want to know more about business Check out these lessons and subscribe for any future learning. And if you really found this video entertaining, why not like and subscribe and we'll keep the Cyber Teachers content coming.